Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So in this video I'll attempt to find assets that gave a greater return than the S&P 500. Now before we begin, if you like the videos on this channel then be sure to click that subscribe and like button and to be notified about new videos from this channel hit that bell notification. So I'm currently on Google's website, it's called codelab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it easy to start programming in Python. So all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So to get started writing this code, go ahead and click on File, then click on New Notebook, where a new tab will open up for you, and then eventually a new cell. And in this cell, I'm going to put in a description and comments about the program. So I'll just type description here, and I'm going to put get assets that gave a greater annualized return than the S&P 500. All right, next I'm going to create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left. Also, if you would like to support this channel or just get the data set or code from this video, then I will leave a link to the Patreon page at patreon.com slash computer science for you in the description below. Also, the material in this video is purely educational and should not be taken as professional investment advice. So invest at your own discretion and please, 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 please do your own research before making any sort of investment. All right, so let's go ahead and continue with the program. So in this cell, I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout the program. So I'm going to import NumPy as MP, and I'm going to import pandas as PD, and I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left, and this will let me know if I made any mistakes in this cell. All right, so next I'm going to create another cell, and now I'm going to load the, I'm going to load the data set that I plan on using throughout the program. So since I'm on Google's website, I'm going to use the library to do this. So from google.colab, I'm going to import files and I'm going to just type files.upload to upload the file. So let's go ahead and run this and then click on choose files. I'm going to choose this assets.csv file. Now the assets.csv file contains assets from the NASDAQ and it contains data on the S&P 500. So we're going to give this a little time to upload and then we're going to just go ahead and create a new cell while it's doing that. Okay, it looks like it is done uploading. And in this cell, I'm going to read in the data. So I'm going to create a variable called assets and set it equal to pd.read underscore csv. And then I'm going to input the name of the file that we just now uploaded, which is called assets.csv. And then I want to show the data. So I'm just going to put show data here and I'm going to type assets and let's go ahead and run the cell and take a look at the data set. Okay, so now we can see we have our data set here. It has many, many columns as we stroll along or scroll along uh, to the right. And then in between here, we can see that we don't see some of the columns. And at the very, very end of this data set, we have our S&P 500 column. All right, so let's go ahead and just scroll back on over here. Also, I noticed that we have this date column and we have our indices as integer values. And I really want to get rid of this date column. Let's go ahead and take a look at this date column. So we can see that this data set contains data on these assets from January 2nd, 2013, all the way to March 25th, 2022. So we have 2013. 2,325 rows of data and 104 columns and so that means that we have about 103 assets in this data set because I'm just subtracting one because of that date column. So speaking of that let's go ahead and get rid of this date column and let's make the dates the indices. So I'm just going to go back up here and I'm going to set the date as the index. Okay so I'm going to set assets equal to assets.set underscore index and then I'm going to put pd.datetimeindex and then put assets date.values. Okay, and that should change the indices or the index to be the date. And then I want to remove or drop the date column. So I'm just going to type assets.drop and I want to drop that date column and I want to do it within the data set. So I'm going to set in place equal to true. And then I want it to be on the column. So I'm going to set axis equal to one. And let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so now we can see that the date column has been removed and now the indices are the date. All right, and so we still have everything else in our data set. Okay, now also I see, 
I see that there are NAND values here and that could be because this asset specifically didn't exist during this time period so this is Airbnb I believe so let's go ahead and get rid of those NAND values from the data set in the next cell so I'm going to create a new cell here and here we're going to remove the NAND we're going to remove the columns with NAND values okay and I think that'll give us a more complete data set so in order to do this all you have to do is type assets dot drop in a and we want to drop the column so access will be equal to one and then I'm going to set in place equal to true and then I want to take a look at the data so I'm just going to put show the data here and then type assets let's go ahead and run this cell okay so now we can see that that column specifically was removed but also any other column that had NAN values in it were also removed. So let's scroll down here and we can see now that we have 88 columns. So that means that within this data set, we now only have 88 assets. Okay, but I still think that's a decent amount. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. Okay, so now in this cell, I want to get the simple simple daily returns so I'm going to create a variable called daily underscore simple underscore returns and I'm going to set this equal to assets.pct underscore change alright and then I want to take a look at the data so show the data so I'm going to type daily underscore simple underscore returns let's go ahead and run this cell and there we go so now we have the daily simple returns. Let's create a new cell. And in this cell, I want to get and show the annualized returns. So I'm going to create a variable called annual underscore returns. And I'm going to set this equal to daily underscore simple underscore returns times, or actually dot mean times 252 because there's approximately 252 trading days in a year for the stock market sometimes it's 253 so let's show the data so I'm just going to type annual underscore returns and let's run this okay so now we can see our annualized returns and with this information we can we can really figure out basically which asset gives a greater annualized return than the S&P 500 and we can see the information for the S&P 500 here but let's just go ahead and show the data as well so we're going to show the annualized return for the S&P 500 so that's simple enough just type annual underscore returns SPY. All right, so let's go ahead and run this, and we can see the annualized return for the S&P 500. All right, so let's create a new cell. Now I want to show all assets that gave a higher annualized return than the S&P 500. So I'm going to do a loop for this. So for I and range 0 to the length of the annualized returns or annual returns if the annual returns at position I if it's greater than the annual returns of the S&P 500 then I want to then I want to print the annual returns dot index at position I because that will give us the asset symbol or the asset name all right and then I'm going to put a colon here and I also want the also want the assets annualized return so annual returns at position I okay so let's go ahead and run this and there we go so here's a list of assets that have 
have given a greater annualized return than the S&P 500, at least within this time frame for this data set. So I think that's pretty cool. And from this list, we can see that companies like um, companies like Apple and Alphabet, also known as Google, G-O-O-G, -O -O -G, and Amazon, which um, is right here. All right, so we can see that all of those have historically outperformed the S&P 500 in the past few years. So does this mean that you should invest in these companies instead of the S&P 500? I think that answer truly, truly depends on you and your risk tolerance and many other factors that pertain to your personal finance and how you um, how you want to invest. So again, I'm not a financial advisor, so please do your own research before investing in anything. I just really hope that you enjoyed the video. You found it entertaining. I hope you found it educational. Thanks for watching the video and a special thanks to the Patreon supporters on Patreon.com. If you would like to become a supporter of this channel, again, I will leave a link to the Patreon page, patreon.com slash computer science in the description below. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have an awesome day, and I will see you in the next video.